Cave paintings and petroglyphs are undoubtedly some of the oldest and most interesting artworks found anywhere on Earth. Some of these artworks found within the unforgiving terrain of the Great Outback within Australia, for example, have been dated at well over 10,000 years old. Illustrations in ochre that show many of the animals our distant ancestors loved or hunted, along with many other forms of artistic recreation. Like a time capsule allowing us to travel back, to peek into the minds of ancient man. Although these ancient artworks are undoubtedly important to our understanding of ancient man, there exists a number of other petroglyphs that are considerably different to these primitive achievements. Found within the White Mountain of Wyoming, there are a number of petroglyphic carvings that were seemingly made with nothing else than our ancestors' hands. These deep-set handprints were somehow left within solid sandstone, as if created by softening the rocks with their minds, hands, or perhaps voices alone. How did an ancient people manage to create these marks? Did our ancient ancestors somehow figure out how to soften stone? There are many sites all around the world which possess similarly enigmatic marks. Were they left by individuals capable of softening stone, or perhaps left upon the stones while not fully formed? To melt or soften stone requires immense heat, that which is usually only found within the center of the earth, or indeed the lava flows which spew forth from its core. One interesting theory regarding the possible softening of stones, created far back within antiquity, was initially discovered still been surviving within the minds of locals who surround the ancient sites of Peru, most notably Sacsayhuaman. A theory put forth to explain the shaping of stones within the fortress, regarded as a local legend by the first explorers of these sites. Percy Fawcett, as well as Hiram Bingham, who actually rediscovered Machu Picchu, noted that it was a liquid derived from plants, which was apparently known to the ancients to turn stone soft. In fact, in 1983, a Catholic priest attested to using the technique, actually achieving the softening of solid stones, although he was apparently unable to return the resulting flurry back to solid stone. Furthermore, according to other researchers, Jan Peter de Jong, Christopher Jordan, and Jesus Gamera, among others. Ancient walls within Cusco show evidence that ancient cultures used very high temperatures to shape them. This unknown process vitrified the surface of the blocks, turning them to glass. Based on these observations, Jong, Jordan, and Gamera speculated that ancient man possessed an advanced device which somehow allowed them to melt stone blocks. And although the petroglyphs of the White Mountains are yet to be fully studied by anyone, we feel they are probably the strongest piece of evidence of this lost process. Hi guys, have you ever heard of Dendera Temple? Known as the Sixth Gnome of Upper Egypt, it is one of the best preserved ancient temple complexes on Earth, and it bears the scars of what must have been the most frightening and destructive of events. An event that is ignored by the majority of modern academia. The complex spans some 40,000 square feet, and within the temple is some of the most well-preserved ancient artworks of anywhere in Egypt. Along with preserving the exquisite art and decorations, the temple also preserved evidence of something we were not taught about in history class. Upon the granite steps, which still lead to the temple's roof, in direct alignment with a small window cut into the thick stone wall, is evidence of severe melting. At one time in the temple's long life, the steps within were turned into liquid magma. What catastrophic event could lead to the melting of granite steps through a small window in the wall? Were such events commonplace, or was it the result of an accident? Is this why the ancient structures were built with such huge blocks of stone? 
Many have speculated that the Dendora Temple is built upon an even older site. Are the steps surviving remnants of this much earlier complex? Were they part of a structure that once witnessed a solar flare, perhaps, or maybe a localized supernova? Many who have examined the steps and the surrounding area have speculated that nuclear blasts may have been detonated within ancient Egypt, or even before. The ancient site in India, for example, 10 miles west of Jodhpur, with radiation that was so intense the area is still highly dangerous. An ancient layer of radioactive ash was discovered that covers a 3 square mile area. Scientists investigating the site where a housing development was being built established that there was a very high rate of illnesses in the area. The levels of radiation were so high the Indian government eventually cordoned off the entire area. They later unearthed an ancient city which shows strong evidence of an atomic blast dating back some 12,000 years, which destroyed most of the buildings and killed an estimated half a million people. Did nuclear war occur in our distant past? Were these ancient structures which have stood the test of time actually built as bunkers? With melted steps and irradiated ancient cities found throughout the world, the evidence is certainly compelling. As always, thanks for watching guys, until next time, take care. Tambo Machai is an ancient site located within Peru that, like so many others within this remarkable landscape, clearly demonstrates a level of sophistication within its stonework unquestionably far out of the reaches of those who are academically claimed to have been the builders of these remarkable sites. It is a site that not only possesses the same mind-boggling methods of polygonal masonry as that of Machu Picchu and Sacsayhuaman, among many others, but also exhibits an excellent example of the levels of refinement that also went into the building of the irrigation systems throughout the area. Systems that, although unimaginably old, still function perfectly to this day. Furthermore, and perhaps most intriguing regarding this area, even eclipsing these astonishing feats of ancient engineering, is an area in particular which exhibits some of the most perplexing peculiar feature to be found anywhere in ancient Peru. This area of stone is not merely vitrified but was, at some point within the distant past, turned to lava. With the limited investigations available, predictably none of which undertaken by funded academics, it has been revealed that this mysterious event did not occur as one would have presumed from a heating from above, but from beneath, or perhaps from within the center of the stonework, successfully melting the stone wall in its entirety into a pool of liquid magma. And although largely overlooked by tourists, and indeed academics alike, the evidence of the stone having once turned to liquid is undeniable. The question then, what turned this stone to liquid? Was it some form of weapon? Or perhaps is this evidence to suggest how polygonal walls were once built? Perhaps these as yet unexplained polygonal walls were constructed with such precision due to a past ability of its builders, able to melt and shape these stones prior to placement. Or perhaps, could this melted stone be evidence of a war? One that occurred between the inhabitants of these ancient ruins and an unknown entity, ultimately resulting in their demise. Perhaps being the reason why these highly advanced, highly capable ancient people from these civilizations not only mysteriously disappeared, but left many a quarry amid ancient stonework seemingly abandoned, left where we find them today. In another area of the world, far away from Peru, there also exists compelling evidence of such a war, having actually once taken place with a possible entity from above. Eerily, this site is claimed as the remnants of a battle with God, specifically surrounding the biblical story of Sodom and Gomorrah. Sulfur balls embedded among the landscape at this specific site is undoubtedly compelling evidence to support these accounts of war, a holy war undertaken at this specific location that, regardless of holy scripture, was fought with a foe of considerable ability. Exclusively found at these sites are white, pure sulfur balls embedded in the mortar 
that now, due to their tremendous age, are slowly turning to powder. The sulfur found at these sites has also, intriguingly, been tested from 93% to as high as 98% pure sulfur, with trace metals such as magnesium found within that would have produced astounding heat, easily capable of melting stainless steel and indeed the stones within Peru. Furthermore, the brimstone found is significantly different to sulfur found elsewhere, almost as if this brimstone was specifically designed. For example, sulfur from within natural geothermal regions is yellow in crystal form. In the past, we have covered many ancient anomalies, out-of-place artifacts, and unexplainable features, all hinting at an ancient high technology which ancient man once possessed. An ability to create tremendous heat, and thus advanced metallurgy, and in some cases, seemingly turning stone to magma, a knowledge and technology which at some point within history became lost. One upart in particular is the slab of Beit Sharim, an enormous glass slab dated at many thousands of years old. Yet to have created such an enormous piece of ancient glass would have taken incredible heat in an incredibly large furnace. Coincidentally, all sharing an inexplicable similarity with the collection of artifacts which are the focus of this video. Discovered in 2019 on Melbourne Beach, off the coast of Florida, a total of seven artifacts, including the ancient Peruvian death mask, were found. After detailed analysis, the composition of metals used in the manufacture of the artifacts have baffled scientists. Created using copper, gold, and silver, yet what stunned those investigating the items was the presence of iridium. Not only is iridium incredibly rare on Earth, with most found within meteorites, but its melting point is also yet another mystery. For as how the Inca apparently created them, if indeed the Inca were responsible in the first place, is yet to be explained. Dated at over 12,000 years ago, some of the artifacts clearly depict known Incan gods, one of which being Viracocha. Whether these beliefs were merely adopted, like the many unexplainable ruins we regularly cover, and claim were merely re-inhabited is unknown. Yet what we do know is that the melting point of iridium, 2446 degrees Celsius, thus any artifact dated to these tremendous ages, yet created with such tremendous temperatures, furnaces and metallurgies claimed as undiscovered during or prior to their claimed eras or ages of construction mean that they simply shouldn't exist. Yet, they do. The question is how. How did the Inca acquire such rare elements? How did they manage to accomplish such temperatures and work the metals at such an early age within known history? We find their possible true origins highly compelling.